Yo, what up guys? I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel. Excuse my voice, I'm recovering from a cold and uh, my voice still sounds a little raspy. But just bear with me for a little bit, I'm sorry about that. But today, I'm going to be reviewing the Adidas Harden Step Pack. And this shoe is going for 80 bucks, so super cheap. And I guess this is Harden's takedown model. I'm not really sure if he's replacing the BE, because we haven't seen the BE. And then they came out with this. So does he have three signature lines, his signature line, his BE, and then the step back, or is the step back a replacement? I'm not 100% sure, but here it is. If you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box, and let's get it started off with the traction. So the traction, they're using full on herringbone in the forefoot and midfoot, and as you get into the heel area, you have a very similar pattern to, I guess, the Harden Volume 1 and the Harden Volume 2 with this dimpled pattern. And the traction is really, really nice. Uh, on a clean court, you have a solid bite. It's the super sexy time. But on dust, it picks up a good amount of dust. And if you let too much dust build up, you do slide out just a little bit. I, I wouldn't say it's as bad as, I guess, previous Adidas models like the Pro Vision and the Marquee Boost. But you still do slide out. And I would say it's moderately dangerous. So you have to keep in mind, you have to constantly wipe. If, if you're playing on a dusty court. And as you guys can see, the herringbone pattern is very, very close together. So I believe that's trapping dust and dirt and uh, overall making it a little bit harder to, to wipe off the dust. I mean, it's a pretty easy wipe, but you do have to wipe a couple of times to wipe off all the dust. So on dust, not very good. For durability, I also don't think it'll be good. It's really soft rubber. And I do notice some fraying on the actual herringbone as well. So durability also doesn't seem good. So overall traction, I would say is pretty good. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have to wipe a lot. Do not play with these outdoors. And there is a good squeak to them. It has a pretty loud and high pitched squeak. As far as heel to toe transition goes, I mean, it was pretty smooth. I thought it was gonna be horrendous, especially if you notice the outsole just covers up the entire midsole. I don't know why you would ever do this, but it, look at this. This is all rubber caging the midsole, so there's absolutely no compression. One thing that does help is this curved shape. So if this was more of a 90 degree angle, it would feel a lot more clunky. The forefoot is easily bent, and you have a nice curved shape here in the forefoot, unlike the, you know, the Dawn issue and the Marquee Boost, where it just basically slapped the floor. So heel to toe transition is actually pretty smooth. And I was pretty surprised about that. As far as the cushion goes, cushion is really, really bad. You have a full length bounce midsole, which is caged. Basically throughout the entire midsole, forefoot and heel. So there's absolutely no compression. And the cushion is very, very thin. I mean, court feel is really good. And I feel like Harding really likes to have court feel in the shoes. But impact protection is really bad. If you're doing a hard landing, you're going to feel it. If you're just running around, it also doesn't feel very good. And I feel like, you know, they could have made the cushion a little bit thicker. And it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Because core feel still would have been good. But impact protection just, I think, is really, really bad in this. So cushion is very, very bad in this shoe. As far as the materials go, here in the toe area, you have a synthetic material, which acts kind of like a toe guard. It covers up this mesh material, which you can find in the middle of the toe area. And the synthetic is actually not that bad. It's soft. It's pretty thin and it gets the job done. So when you put on the shoe, it actually feels really comfortable. And this mesh isn't like a shit mesh. Here for the eyelets, you have a synthetic material which feels really cheap. So overall, you're not gonna get a premium material for the price, but when you're playing it, it gets the job done. It's comfortable. So I'd say for $80, it's a pretty nice material. For the fit of this shoe, I would suggest going true to your Adidas size. Width-wise, I would say it's slightly wide. So if you have a wide foot, you should probably be okay going up half a size. There's also no dead space in the toe area and the midfoot area. So fit was pretty nice for me. As far as supporting lockdown goes, I didn't have any problems with lateral containment. As you can see, the midsole and rubber outsole does come up to act as a cage for lateral containment. And you have a nice low and wide base. So I didn't really experience any lateral instability. So supporting lockdown is really good in the shoe. All right, as far as the weight goes, it's 12.87 ounces. An average weight, and that actually does surprise me a little bit. I thought it would be a little bit lighter than that. Because on foot, it feels pretty minimal but also very comfortable. It's weird because like the overall material is actually thin, but there's a, the right amount of padding for me here in the ankle area as well as in the tongue. So it also feels really comfortable. 
So I think they, they did a really good job on making the shoe feel minimal and comfortable. And also it's a responsive shoe, just watch out for the traction on dust. As far as the ventilation goes, I mean, even though this is a mesh material and you do have ventilation holes in the synthetic material here in the toe area, I still found it a little warm. There's not a lot of airflow going through this mesh material. Continuing on to durability, the upper I feel like will last a pretty long time. Just watch out for the outsole. I mean, if you're playing on an indoor court, you should be good. But if you're playing on an outdoor court, you'll probably eat through this outsole pretty quickly. As far as the aesthetics go, not a huge fan. I mean, there are a good amount of colorways available. You have some basic white, gray, and black colorways, but also some very colorful colorways that I think are pretty cool and overall make the shoe look a little bit better. But the overall silhouette, in my opinion, isn't my favorite. Tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. But wrapping things up, for $80, I mean, for an $80 shoe, if you're looking for performance, this is a pretty good performer. I mean, if it was a little bit more expensive in that $100, $110, $120 $100 price range, I find it difficult to recommend to you guys. But since it's $80, I would say just go ahead and go for it. I found myself enjoying the shoe while I was playing it. Like I said, there are a few things that I didn't like, like the performance on dust and the cushion being really, really bad for impact protection. But other than that, it's pretty solid. So yeah, that's my review on the Harden Step Back. Again, if you guys want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.